So um, on, on the Chopper platform, you mentioned um, something about having a suit of games. Is this the only title that you have released or are there others? Um, currently, this is the only title because it's kind of like a pilot. We want to see the acceptance and get feedback from you know, our target audience before we you know, scale up and start generating more games. What we do have is a game engine that you know, simplifies that process. So once we have you know something the users love, then we can churn out you know a number of games in quick succession, essentially. Um, yeah. So it's not just for one game. The platform is not just for one game. It's for a whole lot of games. And what we even see in the future is making that platform available to other developers, making our APIs available to other developers, so that they can even develop games that integrate with this platform as well. And um, right now, what platforms is this game, this title, available on? Okay, right now it's available on Java phones. Uh, mostly that would be Nokia, um, feature devices. Um, but in the next two weeks, it's going to be coming out on BlackBerry. We're, hoping, we're also hoping to take it to Android in the near future, but we don't have a clear timeline for that just yet. How long has Danfo um, Reloaded 2 been in development? And you also need to tell us um, what is going on with the name because it's got Danfo, it's got Reloaded, and it's got 2. So okay. uh, that, that tells me that there's some history going on there. Okay, um, well, Danfo Reloaded 2 is the third iteration in the Danfo genre. The first version um, I developed a few years back, and what happened with that was that at that point in time, the channels to the market were not available in Nigeria. So we had a game, we couldn't market. The existing channels were not willing to take a chance on us. And so we just had to put it in the drawer and shelve it for a while. And, but what happened was that around 2010, 2011, the market had changed somewhat. And we were able to, there was get jar, Nokia store, all sorts of places. And then the most importantly, Mobile data had finally, you know, taken, you know, taken root and established as a viable means of distributing content yeah, for um, our local market. And so we used one of those platforms, and the numbers started coming in. We saw a significant number of downloads, I think about two hundred thousand. And then um, we got an opportunity to do a collaboration with one of our partners, Nokia West Africa, and we, then we did down for reloaded with them and what we did around that for Reloaded was there was a competition where people could play the game and then upload their scores either via Twitter or Facebook and there was an online scoreboard and then every week the top two scores would get 100,000 arrow uh, each and so we were very very transparent everybody saw you know you saw you post your scores you see change in real time and we ran that for like five weeks what we now realized was that there were certain conversations that were going that was going on around our content, around the game. And we weren't capturing that information. People were tweeting about it. They were like, okay, the guy on top, how did you get how did you get that score? You must be a real downfall driver. Or someone else goes, um, And you were giving, actually you were giving actual money. You were yeah, giving yeah, yeah. Hundred thousand. Uh, yeah, courtesy your sponsors. Courtesy our collaborators and they were giving actual money. You know, so it was it made it really, really interesting and we began to understand that for our target audience, having social elements as part of gameplay, you know, was very, very crucial. It's not just enough for me to play a game, have an enjoyable experience, I keep it all to myself. I want to share, you know, maybe I want to brag about it, or maybe I want to, you know, challenge someone, okay, do you think you can beat this score? So why make that, take that experience outside of the game? If there was a way to integrate it, wouldn't it make it much more compelling? And that's exactly what we've done. Okay, um, I'm going to ask you one last question. Considering that uh, this this is not exactly your debut into yeah. into gaming, but you aren't nearly as popular as um, the other platforms um, in Nigeria and Africa yeah. that have um, received all kinds of press. People like um, platforms like Kuluya, Maliyo, and uh, how would you say you are different or even competitive compared to all these other platforms? And um, also the fact that you're not doing any stuff for desktop is just like looks like it's strictly mobile so where where is the uh, value proposition and how do you differentiate from these platforms um, well I think one of the things is that we've been in hiding for quite a while because we didn't quite feel we were ready for the market 
at certain points in time. And so um, we decided to take our time to develop a quality product for the, uh, for the African market. And when you look at this market, you realize that it's a feature first market. It's a feature phone first market. And that's where we, that's what has been our focus. That's what's been our emphasis. Um, already we can boast of, you know, an application that has over 350,000 downloads, you know, so we're not, even though we've not been so visible in the market, we've done significant things, and I guess one of the reasons why we avoided the pr uh, press was because we just went, we didn't feel we were ready um, with our own core value proposition and our own offering, but now I think things have changed a bit, we've moved forward and we are, you know, set to launch, so there's no need to hide anymore. All right, before we go, just tell us a bit about Pledge 51 and what you're doing. Okay, um, well, Pledge 51, unfortunately, um, my business partner is not here, so we um, We came together at the IVD, which is the Fate Institute for Venture Design, and one of the things we realized was that we had um, several passions that were shared. We both believed that technology was, you know, an important catalyst in, you know, bootstrapping and transforming any economy. And we both had a strong belief that mobile was a compelling platform for that market. Um, before we joined the Institute, Zubair had already uh, done the Nigerian Constitution, I had already done the first uh, downfall game. And so we had both, you know, we both had a track record in mobile. So it was only natural for us to partner together and to come out with a venture which was one of the objectives of the institute to form teams and for those teams to take on to deep, um, generate viable ventures out of the program which will have significant impact on the African market. So um, in a sense we're just continuing from um, what we started at the IVD. And that's what Pledge 51 is about, and that's our core, our focus. We want to transform the African market, we want to be part of the technological innovation and show that certain things um, that people seem to think are out of reach of Africa are well uh, are available and in abundant supply if we only know where to look and how to tap those resources. All right, um, finally, 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 just tell us. Um, um, where we can find um, Down for Reloaded. Is it live yet? Oh yes, it's available on GetJar um, and you can also find it on the, in the next few weeks. It will be available on the Nokia store and also the Blackberry app store. Thank you very much, Bayo. Okay, thanks.